but did you know? Speed Racer wasn't originally his name in the original anime and manga. The character's name was Mufunego, and the show was called... It was while translating the original anime for an American audience that his name was changed to Speed Racer. Japan was comfortably accustomed to action cartoons in the early 60s, but America was just getting a whiff of them. Johnny Quest, a realistically styled Hanna-Barbera cartoon that ran in 1964, was mostly responsible for finding a new demographic that ate up mildly cheesy action with above average hair. I've just closed my eyes again. It ran for a year because it was incredibly expensive to produce. America started looking for things like that to import, knowing Japan had been making cartoons like that forever. Enter Mach Go Go Go, or as he will now be known. <laughs> Speed Racer of the Racer family. It was a hit. What is remarkable to me about the cartoon is how the races were animated. There are incredibly complex car rotations happening while most of the conversation scenes read like traditional anime. You know, characters standing perfectly still while their mouths continue to animate. But the action and driving scenes? woo -wee! Speed Racer slash Mach Go 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 is a show blissfully about pushing the visual medium of the cartoon into a new space. But also, you know, I've just closed my eyes. anime stuff. Speed Racer ran for 52 episodes. Fast forward to 1992, the year of Nobody Beats Taco Bell. Where else you gonna get so many? This was when Warner Brothers announced they had acquired the rights to the property and were producing that option through Joel Silver's production company. Actors are announced and actors leave. At one point, WB hired Alfonso Cuaron to direct the film. A lot of people attached themselves to the project and one by one, they all left. This goes on until about 2006 when Joel Silver starts pushing the Wachowski sisters, with whom he'd obviously collaborated on the Matrix franchise with. The Wachowskis are coming off of two Matrix sequels and a Matrix video game that were received, well, I'm sure you were there. The Wachowskis, I think understandably, saw this as an opportunity to reach a wider audience, which is something that Joel Silver agreed with given that their previous movies together had all been rated R. Also realistically, this was a cartoon anime import that was two to three entire generations and half a world away from its original audience. So finding a new one requires the right vision. Warner Brothers spent 14 years trying to make a live-action Speed Racer movie happen. That's a pretty long time to hold on to an option with an intent to make something, so I can imagine WB being pretty ready to shoot something. The Wachowskis were professed fans of the original show. I'm sure that was super helpful for convincing WB to part with $120 million to make a kid-targeted super action car race movie. And make a kid-targeted super action car race movie. They did. never see another movie like Speed Racer. And for the meaning of that sentence, in as many ways as you can, a movie that breaks down the conceptual mechanics of a cartoon, i.e. the Wachowskis did their damnedest to shoot a movie free of depth of field, a thing they use about 50 different solutions to accomplish, a movie exploding from the brim with visual information. Also, a movie where entire sections are free of conventional film editing. You experience the sport from all perspectives in a free-flowing stream of consciousness visual montage, for lack of a better term. And then the movie goes full anime. It's hard to enumerate the number of ways Speed Racer isn't like other movies, and also a movie that scored 400 Xanadu points. And I know what you're thinking. Xanadu only scored 300 Xanadu points, and yeah, 
That's exactly what I'm saying. This movie doesn't have grass, it has GRASS! It isn't racing, it's emotional, high-speed, funkalicious car dancing. It's the story of a family that's also a race team whose last name is... Racer. A movie where mom and pop's racer actual names name their son Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer Go was the theme song, the tagline, the main character, and the never subtle ethos of the show. The Wachowskis made a film unapologetically aimed at children. There is literally no subtlety in this entire color palette. Only a fool would try and market this to a Oh shit. To put the Speed Racer opening into historical context, you will definitely understand. It opened seven days after Iron Man, which handily won its second weekend of release. But Speed Racer also opened behind What Happens in Vegas, a movie I'm pretty sure I hallucinated. You want amazing facts? Here you go. Speed Racer secured the 13th highest box office haul for a PG-rated movie in 2008 in America. For the record, that's six places lower than PG-rated Beverly Hills Chihuahua a week after Iron Man that had this thing. Speed Racer had the kind of catastrophic time at the box office that ends careers. You gotta be Shaquille O'Neal to survive Kazam. Actually, new metaphor. You gotta be David Lynch to survive Doom. This movie did not click with audiences immediately, which I think is somewhat understandable. If you were not prepared for the everything at 11 million levels of excess in this movie, it can be quite tiring. The movie also throws 10 times the amount of narrative information at its audience than it looks like it is because of how many disparate ideas are often edited together into a kind of memory melange. It's kind of a lot for the brain to handle. Critics were not only negative at the time, they were upset. Speed Racer was not given its day in the sun. Least of all, Rex Racer, played by the dreamy and unstoppable Scott Porter. I've just closed my eyes. There is an artistic expression that resonates with me and so many others all these years later. An attempt to make a kid's movie while simultaneously making relevant artistic advances in the medium the Wachowskis work in. To put it another way, the perspective on the action, the way the story is expressed to the audience, is the experience. Realism was never the goal. That's cubism, baby! And it's not me making that argument. Lana Wachowski is making the argument that Speed Racer is a cubist film. Shit's about to go thermonuclear, y'all. Cinema, as an art form, is not done growing. Art forms start small, generally in small pockets of interest before mainstream attention hits them. The ensuing money tornado makes those art forms complicated. Just ask uh, video games right now. Oh! It's in the nature of an art form to grow and to develop. Speed Racer came into existence right at the beginning of one of those mammoth revolutions inside of the film space. It just happened to be somebody else's cataclysmic business success. I mean, Speed Racer was at ground zero of a tectonic shift in the film industry. Disney bought Marvel in 2009, Disney bought Star Wars in 2012, Disney bought The Moon in 2037. Speed Racer also happens to be a movie cartoonishly about big business money coming in and having bad faith, make money, die trying influence on the preeminent form of entertainment on the planet. It isn't subtle. Everyone's motivations are surface level and uncomplicated. This is a movie entirely about not letting corporate money ruin the thing you love. About a thing they loved. And I don't think this part can be understated. The Wachowskis accomplished this inside of the studio system. And I was completely ravenous to find material where the Wachowski sisters talk about their experience on Speed Racer, but you will not be surprised to find 
that particular genre of film insight is kind of missing from the zeitgeist a little. I did find one interview where Lana is low-key going off on making art within the studio system, and she mentioned two very specific influences on what they were trying to do on Speed Racer, Cubism and James Joyce. Lana stepped up to the plate and pointed her bat at Saturn not center field. Game respect game, Lana. James Joyce, famous for his modernist interpretation of structure, dialogue, and characters, was whom Lana specifically cited. According to her, Joyce drove to extend the grammar of literature. James Joyce was a modernist, and the thing supporting the structure of a movie is the editing. The entire film is built out of it. The expression they were going for is saying, inventing in the way we experience stories is just as important as the story you are experiencing. Invention and revolution are keys to artistic survival. That's literally true of any artist in any era. Picasso had a blue period. Artists can be masters of more than one thing. The Wachowskis built a movie unlike anything in mainstream film, which you can disagree about the execution of, but Speed Racer is a wild swing questioning the rules of the system at the exact moment Marvel took over that system. That probably felt like a profound moment in retrospect, which brings us to cubism. This is hopefully common knowledge, but it could be surprising to you. Cubism exists in art forms other than painted art. Rose is a rose is a rose is a rose. Art is always referencing and reflecting on itself. That's why art is cool. That's the energy the Wachowskis were going for. You need people questioning the system or else the system never changes. Whoa, that's what the Matrix was about. Whoa. At last. Whoa, come to think of it, all the Wachowski movies are about toppling unjust power structures with invention and revolution. Blah. V for Vendetta is about as subtle as a nosebleed. Speed Racer came from a very real place and I'm extremely glad it exists even if I'm not always in the mood to be overrun with visual explosions and to quote my notes directly, an ending so apeshit tap dancing Christ out there that it transcends film as a genre entirely and becomes expressionism. Speed Racer literally engages in the creation of art and the melting of the fourth wall at the end of his racing movie. Art should challenge us especially from perspectives that are not our own. That's kind of why we need art. And that's why we need movies like Speed Racer that have the vision to push the form. And you put that into extremely simplified context. In other words, go Speed Racer, go. Hello everyone, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the Speed Racer video. This was a really fun one to do. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull off a video about Cubist films, uh, but the power of Lana Wachowski brought me through, so big ups to Lana. <laughs> Please, please, please check out our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash moviesamikey. That helps us keep going and that helps us keep making this show. Um, also, if you want to support the channel, you can check out catawampus.inc where all of our uh, merchandise is available. I think it's pretty cool. You can get a No One Knows What They're Doing shirt or a Fight Less Talk More Say Sorry Sometimes shirt. All the good stuff. Okay, bye.